Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm gonna review this, the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit. First, I'm gonna take them on a short run around Dublin in them. Then I'm gonna put them on the turntable and list their specifications. Then I'm gonna review them. And finally, I'm gonna see if I can recommend them. I use the Hoka Ona Ona Clifton 7 as my easy day shoe. Um, it's coming towards the end of its life. Um, Hoka had brought out the Clifton 8. It didn't look very different and I was interested in trying new things and so I decided I wouldn't buy that. And then Raj Coomer had put in the comments that uh, maybe I try this shoe, the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit. Uh, I like the look of the shoe. I liked Raj Coomer's idea and so uh, here they are. Ben from Benzies News Showdown or Shootdown, I don't know how to pronounce that, you can tell me Ben. Anyway, uh, he wanted to see videos of me running around South County Dublin. Uh, so because these are a relaxing shoe, I took these to South County Dublin where people go to relax, which is Dunleary Pier. It's usually jammers, uh, so I went to Dawn. Uh, so uh, let's run around the pier and see the shoe in action. <laughs> enjoyed my run around uh, Dunleary Pier at dawn. Uh, now we'll stick the shoe on the turntable and we look at its specifications. Nike say that the shoe weighs 314 grams or 11.08 ounces in a men's size 10. This shoe is a US 13, men, EU 47.5, UK 12, CM 31, BR 46. The shoe measures 310 millimeters long internally. In this size it weighs in the left shoe 366 grams or 12.9 ounces and in the right shoe, 360 grams or 12.7 ounces. It has a nine millimeter drop and a stack height of 36.6 millimeters. Nike have lots to say about the Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit, including, get after those long runs with the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit. A lightweight and responsive foam feels comfortable and helps deliver energy with every step. It's one of our most tested shoes designed to help you feel the potential when your foot hits the pavement. Testing shows that the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run reduces injuries at a similar rate as the Nike React Infinity Run, which in a separate study has shown to reduce injuries by 52% compared to the Nike Air Zoom Structure 22, our traditional motion control shoe. Celebrate the swoosh. The swoosh celebrates its 50th anniversary by intertwining the past and present. The original swoosh is outlined over the current version, 
representing the path Nike has taken from yesterday to today. Come together. This special edition colorway celebrates unity as athletes worldwide emerge from the year's past events to compete in this summer's games. It's a celebration of sport, humanity, and our ability to push through the toughest of challenges. Not intended for use as personal protective equipment, PPE. <laughs> Let's review the shoe and see if what Nike says is true. Well, we know about the, the bit about the PPE. I'm not even sure why they have to write that down. But anyway, let's review the shoe. The upper of the shoe is surprisingly breathable. If I stick on the old stick of light and stick it into the shoe and then move that around, uh, you can see that it's actually quite breathable. I was surprised when I got it, I was surprised because the, the feeling is, is, is one of plushness. Um, and you kind of think there's probably a couple of layers of material, but there isn't. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it, it is plush, um, but it's nice and it's breathable. Um, the tongue on the shoe uh, is, is very nicely padded, but it doesn't have a pass through that the laces usually go through, which doesn't bother me uh, in, in the slightest, but I just found it unusual. I've only got one other pair of shoes where that happens. And the laces themselves are, are not very long. Uh, I've criticized the Mac 4 Hoka's for long laces. Um, these ones have a bit on the short side. Maybe, maybe I'm too picky about lace length size. Uh, anyway, um, and then the liner is, uh, it's very thin. Uh, for such a plush shoe, it's got a really, really thin liner. But then when you're on a slab of 36.6 millimeters of foam, <laughs> this, I, I love the color, uh, clearly. <laughs> I love the color, I love the blue. Um, but it's a very, very thin uh, liner. I mean, obviously, it doesn't matter what the color is, you'll, ne you'll never see them. Um, the funny thing about the shoe is, is uh, it's like one of those old 1950s American cars that are huge on the outside, uh, not that big on the inside. Uh, this is huge on the outside. It's very long, it's very wide, it's very tall, um, but inside it's nice and snug. It's not like it's vast inside. It's got a moderate toe box and it's got a moderate width. The midsole is uh, relatively unsophisticated. I'm sure, well, I mean, I know Nike say all sorts of stuff. To me, it looks like a slab of foam that they attach something to. Uh, that's, I mean, sorry, Nike, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, but it's got a nice, fat, wide base. So even though there's quite a stack height, it, it's it's uh, not as uh, teetery tottery as uh, these boys. Uh, so uh, you can go around the bends in it. Uh, there's a lot of foam, I mean, uh, and on the, there's a thin outsole of black rubber with some studs on it for a bit of traction. So not a huge amount going on, but then it doesn't need to be. It's designed to just be comfortable and land on and, and toe off. They talk a lot about energy return. Um, now this is a US men's 13 and UK 12. And uh, when I compare it to this, which is a US men's 13 and a UK 12, it is the battle lies within from a tray or their base model. Um, the shoes are vastly different in size when you see them together. Uh, I'll show a shot uh, overhead of the two shoes because you, you don't really pick it up, even though I do it this way, I don't think you'll really pick up the size difference. Um, but I'll show a shot from overhead. But these, these are a large shoe. I love the look of the shoe. I mean, it screams comfy from the very padded uh, heel to the lovely big slab of foam. Uh, I looked at this shoe for a long time on the website in various different iterations before I made the plunge and, and bought it. Uh, the swoosh is funny when I look at it. <laughs> it looks to me like, like someone who couldn't color in between the lines and something, you know, um, but I, I get it that the swoosh has evolved. Um, this color, Nike always have the really, they put every color down on the, on the list practically. It says Phantom, Football Gray, Volt and Black. I don't know which one's which. I mean, there's pink, there's yellow. Uh, I wonder, is this the football gray? The, this finish is actually a painted finish. I don't know whether they dip it, spray it, pop it into a mold, don't know. But it, but it looks like at some point in time, uh, it might fall off, which I'd quite like it. Quite like a distressed look on, on this shoe. But anyway, um, I like the look of the shoe. Um, I, I don't get the uh, come together stuff that somehow because of this color, the world is all gonna be happy. Um, I just don't buy that, uh, except I suppose I did. <laughs> anyway, um, marketing, ha. So what are they like to run in? Well, they're probably pretty much what I expected. They're squishy and, and, and spongy and, and along you go. I don't find a massive amount of energy return. There's the high stack and a wide base. They absorb impact. Um, they're okay on turns. I wouldn't go on any sharp turns on them, but you're gonna be going at slow speeds. Um, one thing I did notice is the shoe doesn't want to pick up speed. It doesn't, it doesn't sort of encourage you to go any faster. It sort of says, ah, well, you know, we'll go along here and whatever you feel like yourself. Uh, 
the grip was okay um, I didn't run in the wet um, but there's lots of studs for traction so they're kind of exactly what you think they'd be a, a sort of comfortable shoe to sort of lope along in. Nike say that this shoe is for long relaxing runs. I won't be using it for that because it's too heavy. Uh, I mean they say they use a lightweight foam and they do it's just they use loads of it. I mean a ton of feathers still weighs a ton. Uh, to me this is a heavy unwieldy somewhat blunt instrument. Now it's great. There's lots of lots of reasons to be to be cheerful about this uh, shoe, but lightweight isn't one of them. Uh, for me, I would be using these on moderate runs. Always when I want to be easy to kind of run when you're beaten up, and really what you'd like to do is sit down beside the fireplace in your slippers and dressing gowns. Not that I have a uh, dressing gown, slippers, or indeed a fireplace, but you you get the idea. I think this is an expensive shoe. It's 179. Why, why do they do this? 179.99 euro or 180 dollars. Just, just round up, lads. Uh, 164 pounds 95 or 250 Australian dollars. Now, at that price point, um, it's uh, just, just talking dollars. Uh, the Hoka Bondi Seven is 150, and uh, the Clifton Eights is 140, and Nike's own React Infinity Flyknit is 160. That has a firmer foam, from what I understand. I haven't run it, um, but uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Nike, you sign up for the emails, I've said this before, but you get uh, discounts. So I, I thought initially they'd be, you know, maybe once or twice a year. There was one in summer, that, I don't know what they, that was. Uh, there was one in July, and then there was one recently um, to celebrate the birthday, or the annual birthday of the app. You can only buy the shoe through the app and get a discount, but that was easy enough. It was, in fact, it was very, very easy. Um, and uh, so that was three. And then another discount came in this morning for 20% off lots of apparel. Um, I spent too long, <laughs> too long looking at this, this, that, that. So I'm slightly late making this. Um, but anyway, um, I got these for 30% off. And at that, they start to make a, a degree of sense. At the start of the video, I asked, do these uh, shoes help prevent injuries? Now, Nike say that they do by 52% compared to their Air Zoom Structure 22. Now, to me, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but all that says to me is that the Air Zoom Structure 22 could cause more injuries than these shoes. So that, that's a sort of zero sum game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's no proof in that pudding. Uh, so um, I'm gonna try and run with these. And say, I mean, they, they are nice shoes to run in when you're, you've got, uh, you know, I've got a lot of niggly knee injuries. And when I've got niggly knee injuries and I've got an easy day, I'm gonna run in these, I'm gonna run in these and see how we get on. And I imagine, yeah, you'd feel less beaten up after running these than in uh, a lightweight, uh, low foam shoe. Should you buy this shoe? Well, they're expensive, so don't pay full retail. Sign up on the app or, you know, find some discount somehow. Uh, but if you wanna run along in a pillow of plush uh, for when you're feeling niggly and gnarly, uh, these are pretty good. Um, grab them. Go for an easy run and have a nice, long, hot, relaxing bath. Uh, not that I have a bath either. <laughs> um, shoes. I've got lots of shoes. And I'll be keeping these ones. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. Uh, as always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the descriptions and I really love going through all the questions and the comments and figuring stuff out. There'll be uh, a blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.